हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल वी आर स्टडीइंग क्लास इलेवन फिजिक्स चैप्टर नंबर फाइव लॉज ऑफ मोशन सो वी हैव फिनिश्ड ऑल द टाइप ऑफ फ्रिक्शन एंड इट्स को इन अलोंग विद द एडवांटेज एंड डिसएडवांटेज ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो नाउ दिस वीडियो इज टोटली डेडिकेटेड टू अ डायनामिक्स ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म सर्कुलर मोशन नाउ द फर्स्ट इट स्टार्ट विथ सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स सो दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ फोर्स That is required to make a body move along a circular path. Make a body move along a circular path with uniform speed is called centripetal force. Now this force, centripetal force, it acts inwards along the radius. It acts inwards along the radius and. Uh, where it is directed it is directed towards the center let us suppose there is an object which is performing uniform circular motion along this path this path is having radius r now based on the knowledge of uniform circular motion that we have each at each point the object will have separate direction suppose here the object is there on the circular path but the direction of motion will be along the tangent so without centripetal force if centripetal force was not there what would happen this object will skid away from the path and it will go in this direction so in short the meaning is that it is the centripetal force which keeps the object which hold the object to move in the circular path now uh, when we studied uniform circular motion we studied centripetal acceleration and centripetal acceleration we wrote at ac equals to v square by r this formula we have derived already now according to newton's second law according to newton's second law f equals to ma but an object which is performing uniform circular motion this a will be the centripetal acceleration clear so if we write v square by r in terms of ac this force will be mv square upon r this force is called the centripetal force right and this is the force that we need to make the object move properly in a circular path an example let us discuss a stone is rotated in a circle where will be the centripetal force acting the tension produced in the string will provide the centripetal force planets are also moving around the sun and if there is no centripetal force between planet and the sun the planet will go far away from the solar system so there must be a force which is responsible to make the planets move or hold on to their orbits this is nothing but centripetal force but in reality the gravitational force provides the centripetal force in this context you take another example an electron moving in a circular path around the nucleus so again the electron has to experience the centripetal force if not the electron also will move away so in this case the coulomb attractive force you will come to uh, know this coulomb attractive force uh, later on in the stages but just remember that if the electron has to move in the orbit there must be an attractive force that is a centripetal force and in reality it is the coulomb attractive force that means you take the smallest of small system and you take the largest of large system centripetal force is necessary whenever the object is moving in a uniform circular motion or a circular path the example if you can take for a car which is moving on a circular path if you take a turn right if you take a circular turn on a horizontal road so what will happen if there is no friction if there is no friction the car will move away from the path and accident can occur so the centripetal force in this case is provided by the force of friction between the tires and the road so if there was no friction your car will skid and then it will move away from the path and accident can occur so to keep the car safe on that circular turn we are using 
the centripetal force clear so these were few examples or illustrations related to centripetal force i hope the concept is clear now let us move on to that specific example of car which is taking a circular turn you see whenever we are taking a circular turn either in two wheeler or four wheeler we tend to reduce the velocity right we become slow while taking turn now what is the exact reason behind it and what might be the permissible velocity of any vehicle or object to move properly in a circular path that maximum permissible velocity we will have the derivation of that in the next topic now let us see motion of a car on a level circular path so here i have drawn two different small figures which shows that here this is the circular road or path having radius small r this car is moving on a circular path but you see the direction of motion along this point will be towards the tangent but if you want to stay on the road if you want to stay on the circular path you will need a centripetal force that is fc now you have to realize that this vehicle can move safely only if sufficient centripetal force is acting on the vehicle on this path now otherwise what will happen it will be thrown outside as it follows the tangent so as i said earlier that we tend to slow down our vehicle while turning us there is a permissible speed there is a maximum permissible speed right that has to be maintained so that it is not thrown off the road so let us derive a formula for this maximum permissible speed so let us assume uh, in the starting that a car of mass m is moving with velocity v on a circular road having radius r now this derivation is very easy as we just have to think about the forces acting on the vehicle so let us start with forces acting first force is the weight of the vehicle okay and the weight will be acting downwards what will be the weight of the vehicle w equals to m into g clear so here i am writing m g which is acting downwards now second force will be the normal second force will be the normal force as we have discussed normal is always perpendicular to the surface and acting oppositely to the weight so there will be a normal force n which is acting upward now since the vehicle is not moving any bit in vertical direction we can say that the acceleration is zero or the overall effect is zero so by equilibrium we will we can write this as n equals to mg right now let us talk about the centripetal force the centripetal force which is required for this vehicle is provided is provided by the frictional force between the tires and the road and remember this centripetal force is acting along the center okay and this is only responsible for keeping the vehicle on the road very properly okay now we can write this as fc that is equal to the maximum static friction okay that is acting because centripetal force is given by the static friction and centripetal force is mv square by r can we write this mv square by r equals to centripetal force that is equal to the static friction and we know that what is static friction or maximum static friction it is mu s n right we have already derived or we have already seen this formula so that means if the speed v of the vehicle is such if the speed of vehicle is such that mv square by r mv square by r the centripetal force 
is less than or equal to the static friction maximum static friction then and only then the vehicle will move very safely okay and here if you can replace n by mg so we can write this as mv square by r less than equals to mu s mg then we can cancel m on both the sides so what will be the formula for v square so taking this r on this side v square will be less than equal to mu s r g so maximum speed for safe motion of the car will be equal to square root of mu s r g right what is v that is maximum safe speed maximum sp safe speed for the vehicle to stay on the path and move perfectly without skidding or slipping mu s is coefficient of static friction between the tire and the road r is the radius of the road and g is the gravitational acceleration so here we get our maximum speed formula